I think it's really lovely to see a really amazing community worldwide. And I hope it stays inclusive, open-minded, and that we keep expanding it. Gatti, thank you so much for your time today. Sola is coming soon as we're talking. Um, how are you feeling right now? Because this has been taking for, you know, th this is a process that's been going for a few years. So we're almost there. Like, are you, yeah. I'll believe it when I see it kind of motion right now, or are you starting to relax a bit knowing that, okay, it's really happening? I'm I'm quite relaxed about it. I I uh, it it feels a little bit. I made a joke with my friends about how it almost feels like a little bit of a labor of <laughs> of a child. Uh, but we've had you know the most intense time behind us, which is of course the actual finalization of recordings and editing every day and really making making it to to the point where I feel I'm very happy with what we have created and. Now it can just go into the world and have a life of yeah. its own in a way. So for me, getting ready for a new release means also just like by the time it's coming out, it's yeah, it's just a surrender of sorts. So, yeah, yeah. Is, is it like letting go and you're already focused on what's next? Because obviously these yeah. songs are new to the people that are going to listen to them for the first time. For you, they're almost old news because some of them are years old. Um, mm -hmm. is, it, is it like that? Like the once it's released, you're kind of done with it. I mean, obviously I have to play them live and these kind of things, but are you already thinking about the next album? Well, for me, it's a little bit like it goes song, song by song. Uh, okay. Uh, it goes song by song because uh, like each song uh, has like a kernel of or a team or a kernel of wisdom or personal truth that I'm working on. And so usually when I'm done with one song, I move on to the next. Now we had a few songs where I was working on them simultaneously, but I really like to approach it as a little bit of a, yeah, a personal alchemy, you know, for me, mm -hmm. finalizing a song is like moving on to the next one. And with Saula, the album, it really has become like a sort of a total story of sorts, a total journey yeah. that delivered like now to the audience as one package that they can you know, have their own um, reflections on and responses to. Um, but yeah, I I see it more as uh, it's not like I'm already moving on. Like, uh, you know, we as artists, we keep continuing to gather inspiration for new songs or yeah, yeah, yeah. new projects. But it's it's I'm still very much in the world of Saula right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, as far as a creation process goes uh i feel i'm sort of ready with that and now i'm just very curious to, to yeah, 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 yeah. see what's gonna happen with it you know it can really have its own life now and and do its own thing with uh, with the listeners people that have followed you know obviously that you know we had leaf in the past and then uh you've started or you start your, your your solo journey we've seen singles released from you but this is that first big album that is released under your name um mm -hmm. you said that you're quite relaxed at this point but is that also a little scary because at the you know when an artist releases something as a quote-unquote solo um mm -hmm. album even though there's a whole team involved and lots of musicians and what have not yeah. it's under your name which means yeah. there's nowhere to hide also. You know, you're no. not one of a band, you yeah. are the artist. So is does this release feel different in that regard compared to previous releases? Um, actually, not really, because okay. uh, even when we did a release under Still the Leaf name, it was actually, that was already during the creation of that album, Under Leaf very evident that I was a little bit more like team captain of the group and so the production during the first recordings actually gradually moved to me being there in the studio with my producer Christopher Yu right. and really making it to, together with him and so even though it was still released under the band name it was 
already a solo uh, project or album release and so now also with this album Saula of course it's more visual because it's under the name Katiran but it feels similar to that uh, where I've really like taken the time to make these songs the way I envisioned them and having to had had uh, having not to have made any compromises there um it is the first time though that i'm releasing it of course with a label this is swart records based in mm -hmm. finland really excellent folks and i'm really happy to do it with them because they are so well known actually for their vinyl prints uh and their analog sort of approach to music because they're really like vinyl connoisseurs so yeah. there it's really exciting to also for my listeners for the first time be able to offer vinyl and have the experts look at it and then of course have beautiful colors as well so that like that i think for many artists that's kind of like a milestone when you start to collaborate with other parties in the music industry to say okay uh, i'm not only self-releasing my distribution yeah, yeah, yeah. Digitally, but actually i have now a team that can bring it a little bit further and also maybe have a little bit of a bigger reach with like promoters on on your team and things like that and that is all very new for me uh to do it for myself as, yeah, yeah, as yeah. an artist i i do uh do it also for other artists actually because i'm i'm one of those people who's a little creative on on all kinds of fronts that's why it's like produced by me and my uh, co-producers and and the same goes a little bit for the yeah for all the hassle sort of of the yeah. campaign around it uh that kind of management so yeah it's it's just a labor of uh of love and um especially Saulaya, yeah, uh still relating to that vulnerability it is an album that is tied in to a lot of uh personal obstacles and um yeah concepts of loss heartbreak uh, illness uh, sorrow um even anger uh, you know, difficult emotions to sort of transfer onto song and put Nordic mythology in the mix to make that all click with each other. So in that sense, it's vulnerable. But for me, it's also the only way I can do art. I don't want to perform it. I really want to feel it. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant with uh, doing a little bit like having had a grip on this kernel of truth that, or personal revelation that I had. And then a song is complete. Then I can finalize it. And so, yeah, it's vulnerable in that sense because there are real emotions on the album and we haven't polished those away. Like, I, I didn't want to edit that out or replace it with a better take. I really wanted to keep it as sincere as possible also to, to bridge that or, like, to extend the connection to the listener. There's different songs, but they have to click together, I think is what you said. Uh, and then before that, you also like, you know, how this thing kind of came together more as an album versus just song by song. And I want to ask you about that because, um, you know, I've, I've obviously, I've read the press materials. I've watched some of your other interviews. You've talked about how these songs, you know, individually deal with certain emotions of yourself and, and, mm -hmm. and, and you use metaphor of, of mythology. And a lot of that is tied back to the sea. But yes. when I was listening to this album, it also just feels as one story. And, you know, even if you don't know as a neutral listener, what the name of the, what the title actually means and what some of the old Norse that you use uh, means, the first song kind of makes us feel that we're, at least it makes me feel that we're like, we're on a boat about to embark on a journey. And by the time the, the second song starts, it feels like we, we kind of arrive at this coast of of some whether it's the final destination or not and it really feels like an album that is hard to just play one song of it, it really feels like it is meant to be played as one so mm -hmm. when we look at the the story you're trying to tell should we look at this as not just individual songs that have a connection with certain mythology is this mm -hmm. also like one metaphorical nautical journey from start to finish uh, or is that just me projecting um, I really love to hear your visions when hearing this album because uh, what I find very uncanny is that I get very often the same sort of visuals and reflections back from people when they listen to it for the first time. So that means that I was able in the sound design to sort of capture that uh, story or that idea right. uh, that I had on, on, on the record. 
And so that means a lot to me uh, to hear back. Uh, as far as the songs goes, I really like to tease or like click um, one song with the other. And, and one way of doing that is by doing wordplay or having lyrical bridges. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, that is one way how the songs are connected. Um, I think they can also stand on their own. Um, it's not, uh, you won't get lost in the story of sorts by just right. having heard one or two, uh, because each of them so specifically zoom in on different, um, different types, different ar archetypes that I tied into these nine daughters of this ocean goddess Ran. So these nine uh, billow waves, nine daughters of Ran. And so each one has its own kind of world attached to it. And also a little bit more connecting sagas or other historical or archaeological finds that uh, I could find really click well together. I've taken a lot of uh, creative room there actually, because there was not that much historical source material uh specifically zooming in on these characters that are mentioned of course in these old sagas but this also gave me a lot of room to tie uh -huh. it in with feminine emotions different weather states and yeah uh some riddles as well for those who want to have uh really go a little bit deeper and like to explore also the, the magical side of these right. songs It's clear you've you've done spent a lot of time writing them, but also a lot of time researching this, and you've chosen different languages for different songs. Um, you know, we have Icelandic, we have Norwegian, we have Old Norse. There's a little bit of English in this album as well, um, which makes me assume that those are all very very conscious decisions because mm -hmm. those languages tell a story in a way that you wanted to tell it. Yes. But then, if we go to the masses of the audience not everybody is going to go to that level of depth to understand what's being said the the majority of of the people that will listen to these songs with the extended reaches of a label and with seeing you play live and what have you they might love your music but they'll stay more at that surface where they love the music but don't really know what's being said because mm -hmm. it's not all for example in english um yeah. is that it, that that's a weird balance is that for you a little bit of a shame that people that, that a lot of people are not going to get the full the full depth if you will out of these songs yeah um well i myself as a person uh, i really appreciate it when an artist works with really strong lyrics so yeah. that's like more a personal preference and also how i listen to music if the lyrics are very surface level it's less intriguing for me like i really like to find out more or what could be the meaning i really appreciate it when people use also double meaning like we see of course in old norse there are a lot of the words actually have multiple meanings so you could do really fun sort of word play uh yeah. like in olden times like scaldic games uh so for me that is definitely something i really uh, uh like to listen to and also possibly one of the reasons then uh, why I took that time to dive deeper in. I did this also with help, I have to say that, of linguistic experts. Of course, uh, yeah. Yeah, because there's there's only so much you can really uh, get a grasp on as a as a Dutch person, of course, uh, looking at these old languages. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, I do hope and I, I think that actually music and uh, the voice can carry more than um, just what the lyrics mean. Because if we look at sound, it is basically frequency and mm -hmm. it's, you know, frequency and energy, they are interlinked. And in the old Nordic world, we also look at the voice and the breath as an extension of your soul. It's called und. And so what I hope is that even if people don't understand the ling language or the lyrics meaning, that they will still, and I think this is the case, be able to feel that emotion that's being sent out or transmitted. Mm -hmm or any other kind of frequencies that we put in the sound design because i i really like to put in also different layers of panning for the human ear to say okay where can we put something that's a little bit more resonating for the subconscious you know beat wise or 
tempo wise or volume wise and and where can we really push something more to the front of your consciousness yeah. but i i would hope that um the the songs are sort of big enough in right. how they create it that they carry more than just the meaning of the words yeah 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 that that universal language of music if you will exactly. that uh, yes. that comes with it now there's a ton of people watching this right now that all went huh wait a minute she's dutch she's <laughs> not icelandic she's not norwegian uh so um a question for you i mean then you know growing up in belgium uh, obviously no the netherlands itself has a extremely wealthy history when it comes to seafaring um so the, the the sea has always been extremely important to the netherlands um but um the to, to to really dive into that 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 those norse themes and what have you and we see this being popular all over the world now but for you personally where did that journey start like what is it like what and when you know made you hmm. so attracted to this 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 nordic mythology if you will hmm. well i think for me uh you know when i started out doing the my first craftings of making music i was actually working with other bands who were more focused on celtic folklore and also a german band because found they were deep into different cultures and right. that all explored different uh cultural myths so to say of different uh countries and for me uh i started to notice hey i'm really attracted to this nordic uh theme uh, my first instrument was also this nickel harpa the swedish key fiddle and i also was most attracted to these scandinavian almost romantic folk tales uh Ronja, the robber's daughter like anything uh, art by john bauer all of that that was just like my treat listening to Hetningar and Agarmana. so i would say it was just more coming from a personal preference that yeah, i yeah, yeah. sort of zoned in there um but it was also yeah meeting a lot of people uh on the road going to like viking markets in scandinavia i met like the people who are now in groups like Heilung, they then had a band called Valeraven. Mm -hmm. uh, that was really fun to be there and help them out in sell t-shirts and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, seen one of the first shows of Vartruna there. We clicked, of course, b uh, based on having these old instruments uh, in use, which by that time not a lot of people did. Um, so yeah, it was just also such a welcoming, uh, yeah, surround. Yeah. And yeah. community and there was so much i was so hungry actually to learn more about these folk songs and yeah the first ones i did i didn't have a grasp then yet really yeah, on yeah, yeah. language so now it's almost funny to listen to the first song i did in swedish which was very dutch pronounced and very very cute in the ears of Spanish. there you go there you go but but now you know like i i took the time to invest to learn um pronunciations to work with natives to dive deeper and also to get more a grasp on that song even though uh, of course we will always have the accent uh, of where we right. are born and raised um, I still kind of can get away with it now properly or at least so I've been told <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and yeah it's it's it kind of gives it a very unearthly sound even someone said that to me like it, it kind of adds a charm to it yeah so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the interest uh, has just been there from from the start even from the first days with my band lead with our first Scandinavian traditionals and yeah I just obsessed Being a sweet what's your your take been on because you now in social media and platforms you know exactly with one click where are your listeners located what's their age what you know all that kind of stuff what do they listen to Demographic, is it yeah. is it a surprise to you to see not only how global your audience all of a sudden is but also how metal your audience is yeah 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 of course I think, uh, okay, yes, uh, there was such a large sound there. Uh, I think, of, of course, it was uh, surprising because nobody of us, you know, we were there in the beginning, kind of a handful of people sitting around yeah. the campfire, you know, <laughs> like it was really small in the beginning, uh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago in Scandinavia, even in the Netherlands, we actually yeah. have kind of a root foundation with the Castle Fest uh, festival that first 
time book these bands to Europe to perform. Um, but yeah, it, it's seen a rise. It's been really nice actually to see also mainstream media pick it up. So we could do our instrumentation on beautiful TV series and movies yeah, yeah. and whatnot, and to sort of give that charm of these old historic instruments to to new masses. Um, I do think it also stems because it's not only the music; it's also exactly the community around right. it, the aesthetic. And even for some people, it goes into almost personal beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think it, it sort of fills uh, a need for community uh, where people are getting in touch again with old traditions, uh, maybe yearly uh, ceremonies to keep track of the year and the changing seasons. Some people even tie that into some kind of a new pagan religion. I myself actually stay away from that because I don't would like to be in any kind of name yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, name tied group that says this is right and that is wrong because right. I'm actually always moving in the opposite direction for me everything stems from nature and and we are one with that so so naming it sometimes is a little bit of a problem because it could causes debate but in general I think it's really lovely to see a really amazing community worldwide and I hope it stays inclusive, open-minded and that we keep expanding it. Like that's also what I did with the Asala album. Um, I also really wanted to shed light on a little bit more the feminine, scaldic mm -hmm. perspective, the, the female voice and to look at the female characteristics in these, um, not only in myths, but also from historical records, like what kind of roles did they had in society and how were they honored and how could they help with prophesizing the weather conditions or solving a murder mystery, you know, contacting the spirits, uh, you know, any kind of like seriouses or priestesses even like it was really a little bit more pre-Christian era. Um, yeah, giving also strength and, and um, nourishment to to that role because of course with the popularity we see today we see a lot of the viking warrior tonight. right and so i do have to say this album is really embracing uh also all these other parts of that kind of uh historical and also mythological society that we see there we go. There we go. Well, Catherine, I, I could talk to you for hours more, I think, but we'll have to wrap it up here. I'm excited for this album to come out soon. And then hopefully we'll see you announce many more live shows so that you can continue to expand your community and talk to more fans and see more fans. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best with this album release. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. So. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.